Hey everybody, back by popular demand, it's Power Hour with Giles Tiger Thomas and me, Ron Harris, here on the Ron Harris Muscle Channel. Today we're going to talk about the Arnold Classic that just happened over this past weekend. Giles, we got to start with the cha-ching, cha-ching. The biggest news isn't who won the show, it's mo money, mo money for these guys. So recap for those who might, the three people in the world who might not know what happened. Mo money, less problems for the pros. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, also, Ron, before we get started, um, I, I just realized, I said to you before we came on air, I could have been doing using this mic all the time we were doing power. I've been doing it on my laptop in the other office when I had the full studio and I could have just run it through this laptop. So, you know, I know people consider me to be a creative genius, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I have my moments. Well, the creative geniuses don't always know the technical aspects. You know, I, always you just say, I always say I'm the talent. I don't need to know all that. I'm the talent. But you know, <laughs> in this case, we do kind of. So, yeah, the Arnold Schwarzenegger made a big announcement that first prize. So, in 2022, the first prize for Arnold winning Arnold Classic was $200,000. About six, seven weeks before the 2023 Arnold, they bumped that up from $200,000 to $300,000, which enticed both Nick Walker and Simpson Doubted to jump into the show. Not Simpson, I'm sorry, Andrew Jacked. And then Saturday night, Arnold said, next year, $500,000. Biggest prize money in the sport for first prize, bigger than the Olympia. The Olympia is at four hundred. So now we're all waiting with bated breath. It's it's we're recording this on a Monday. I'm just waiting for Dan Solomon or somebody, Jake Wood, to make an announcement that we're going to match that or exceed that. But this is such a great great news for the athletes, right? Uh, I'm also hearing rumors that the other pro categories categories are going to be increased as well. Oh, good, good, good. So I think they're going to we're going to hear some news on that fairly fairly soon because uh, Brian Powers has already started putting out feelers and responding to Rough Diesel put a comment um, saying he, because didn't um, Classic go up to seventy k? Because yeah. I know Rough Diesel won it a couple of years ago and he won it, so he won seventy thousand dollars. That's twenty thousand dollars more than the Olympia. Right. So right. Uh, so already the Classic is ahead of the Olympia in terms of prize money. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only thing is that I say okay, let, let's relate to Classic first. With classic, um, I mean, Seabum, obviously the, the the king of classic for the last six years. Yeah. You know, fifty thousand dollars. You know, that's that's he's not doing the Olympia to win fifty thousand dollars. He's doing wow. it to win the Olympia. Right. So for him, it's not about prize money, but obviously the title then allows him to find opportunities and ways to create, you know, a huge social media following, a lot of prize money. Sorry, uh, a lot of income streams. You know, which obviously it's worked for him because I mean. You know, I'd love to know what Chris Bond says worth now. You know, he's, he's obviously probably one of the wealthiest people in the oh. in the industry right now. Oh, yeah. As far as active competitors, I guarantee you he's the wealthiest. You know, people like really? Jay Cutler, I, I believe, I would, I would, I would bet that. I'm sure like Jay Cutler is worth more. There's yeah. a few people who are worth more, but they've been retired for you and they're working on other things. But as far as someone who's actively competing, do not doubt for one minute, Chris Bumstead is the wealthiest, the wealthiest person right now. Well, I heard, um, I mean, this was a good few years ago. I heard that Jay Cutler was worth 30 million. I'm sure, and I'm sure you can actually look that up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's ways of looking that up. So it's not like it's private information he didn't want to release. That was several years ago because he's got a big, um, big uh, sort of uh, property portfolio. Yeah. But um, I know know Chris Bonstead's really only gone to the stratosphere, I'd say, in the last three to four years. So the thing is, I mean, we're all curious to know what real, what they really, really make. Um, I mean, I found out um, how much Ronnie makes from his YouTube channel Yeah. Um, just um, like last year and the year before. So I, obviously I have, so I have a gauge for, you know, subscribers, viewers, views and kind of how much they make from these different revenue streams. Yeah. And, you know, Chris is huge on YouTube. He's got, I think, four million subscribers, something wow. like that. He does very well. Every video he puts out gets a minimum 100,000 views. A lot of them will get more, closer to half a million. But yeah. You know, so this is we're waiting to see what what do you think the Olympia needs to do? Do they need to match that to keep their prestige? I mean, I, I don't think they're ever going to lose their slot as the most prestigious title and the most prestigious show. The Olympia is always going to be the Olympia. Mr. Olympia winning that is something they all mm-hmm. they all dream about. But do they need to match that or do they need to exceed that to stay ahead of the game? I think people are missing out on a couple of vital points. The fact that the Olympia has all divisions. Yes. Yep. You know, you think about the the Arnold. It doesn't have 212. It doesn't have women's physique. It doesn't have women's bodybuilding. What's the other category it doesn't it's have? Figure. They, they don't have figure. They don't have figure. So, of course, and the thing is, I mean, up till literally a few hours ago, it was only the first prize of the Open that they were increasing. So I think people get so excited about that. But then they forget about the other divisions and also... 
you know, like Sean Ray was campaigning for athletes who didn't make top 15 to make at least a couple of thousand dollars to cover their costs, you know, because yeah. um, I know sponsors pay for a lot of that stuff anyway. But um, I kind of feel like, um, you know, it's, it's kind of set off alarm bells, uh, but, uh, you know, for terms of the, for, for people, how they feel the Olympia is. But um, the Olympia is still the number one. It still does all divisions. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very curious to hear about this increase on the other the other pro categories because I mean I'm I've, I've got a thing because didn't I say to you I said when I heard before Arnold made the announcement when I heard that he was going to make an announcement I said on the live watch party I said you I did. bet you it's going to go to 500 yeah. and then when we're on the comment the comments coming on the live YouTube live watch party that says that the guy confirmed it's five hundred thousand dollars first prize yeah. but um, I remember when they increased the Olympia to what was it from when it went up from it with AMI in what year was that two thousand when when Phil started winning it it went to four hundred thousand dollars. It was the year that Kai was supposed to compete. He didn't sign the contract. He was in Las Vegas. He made that video crying out in the 2016. Yeah, so I, was, so I believe it went from, I want to say it went from 200 to 400. I yeah. think it doubled. They doubled it just in the last three days, which yeah, I felt was, yeah, which that part, was crazy. Part of me would be more impressed if they they added 30% to all the prize money. So everyone in the top 10 or whatever in the top six, whatever gets prize money, they all, it all increases by 30%. But I think there's a big draw. There's something quite sexy about that first prize, you know, yeah. that's going to pull in those those really really big names. But um, yeah, um, yeah. I just um, yeah. I, I think the Arnold's making some big moves here, um, yeah. challenging the Olympia like this. And I feel because the Olympia it's it's a big event. It's it is arguably a big event, and it probably doesn't pull in as much revenue from the Expo because the Expo isn't as big as the Arnold's. But then they probably pull in bigger sponsors uh, because of um, because it's the Olympia. It's the number one show in the world. Yeah. And the other thing people were talking about was the webcast was free for the Arnold, which, mm. you know, obviously the fans love free. Everybody loves getting free stuff rather than paying anywhere from 20. I think, what was the Olympia last year? I think it was like 60 or 70. It was 80, uh, I think. Was it 80? 80? Okay. Yeah, so, 80 bucks. Yeah. That's, that's expensive, though. That is expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. I mean, it's what people pay if they're watching a UFC title fight or, you know, WrestleMania or something like that. Mm. That's up there, too. They're all comparable. So it's not that far behind. Yeah, I mean, we get spoiled when we get stuff for free, but I, I don't expect the Olympia to suddenly turn around and go, okay, we'll do that just because the Arnold did it. Mm. Yeah. I mean. I, I, to be honest, I'd rather see 212, because 212 women's physique, women, I'm not sure about women's bodybuilding, but I know that um, classic, they all get 50K first prize. Mm. Um, I would like to see, I, I, I'd be happier, I think, if they gen, if they generally increased that by, I don't know, Um I don't know. It's, it, it depends well, you, on how much money they're bringing in, you know? You can't make everybody happy because immediately when that announcement, I saw so many reactions to that post about 500 saying, why increase the money for open? Why don't they just pay all the other divisions? And these are people that either they're competitors or pros in those divisions saying that or they're fans. Mm. Everyone who's a fan of a certain division or a, or a pro in a certain division, they want their division to be paid equally, which the main draw is the men's open. There's, you can't You can't ignore that fact. You can't mm. argue it, really. It's like, if you're ordering, you know, I'm not, I don't watch the UFC fights, but the people that order those, most of them are getting it for the title fight, whatever that is. Mm. The other fights on the, on the card, they're not so, they're not so much responsible for the total. I've just had a thought. I've mm. just had a thought. If, I mean, obviously I'm being really critical and whingy here, but if you, if they were going to increase the first prize of the open by 200 K, I think I'd have rather have seen it match the Olympia by adding a hundred K to the mm-hmm. open and the other hundred K used to bring women's physique and two twelve back. Yeah. But I think I, I, you know, I don't know what Brian Powers motivation is or what he's, why he did it, but I'm assuming it was a statement that we're going to be bigger than the Olympia. We offer more prize money. Uh, and even yeah. we saw Nick strength and power did an interview. I think it was done at like 4 AM on Sunday morning in the hotel room yeah. that Derek Lunsford is probably thinking about this now, because let's say he wins the Olympia again. Let's say the Olympia matches it this year bumps it up from 400 to 500, which is very, very likely. Mm. Is Derek really I, I, good? Yeah. Hang on. Only an extra 100K is not a huge amount of money. They, I would, I think if I was, if they were going to increase it, they'd have to, are they just going to, are they going to go tip the tat and just go and, and just basically gazop them by saying, okay, if you're giving 500, we're going to get 600. Yeah. You know, yeah. or are they going to hold their ground and say, right, look, we know we're the number one contest. We do all divisions. You don't. Right. We're not budging. We're going to put it into... All these because there's so many different elements to the Olympia. I mean, the Olympia and the Arnold, considering they're the two major shows, they're actually quite different. Right. They have different categories. I uh, the, the the Arnold has strongman, 
you know, it's um, it's 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 a completely it's a different vibe. I mean, you and me have been to how many Arnolds? Like six Arnolds and Olympias together. I think something yeah. like that. And they, they they are really quite different events, aren't they? Oh, they are. And you know, you make a good point. The Olympia has to pay every single division. Yeah. Um, but I do think they're going to have to at least match it. They can't stay at four hundred while the Arnold is going to be five hundred. I don't think mm. that they just if it's a matter of pride or just to keep the prestige. I don't see them keeping it at 400. I see them at least matching it. I, so, and that and that, that will mean I believe that could get Derek Lunsford or whoever wins the Olympia this year. Mm-hmm. Why would they turn down, let's say, another half a million dollars that yeah. they could win three months later? I guess we'll see Hadi back at the Arnold next year, then. Why not? I mean, it's great. The fans, the fans want to see <laughs> all the that. top guys. I mean, <laughs> so many guys, so many Nick Walker fans were very, you know, they yeah, were bumming yeah. that Nick didn't do the Arnolds. Uh, yeah. The Andrew Jack fans want him at the Arnold. They, all the guys, all the fans of these athletes, they want to see them at both of the big shows every year. Do you, do you know? I, you know, I have my crazy theories. <laughs> you do, yeah, yeah. I did actually think Nick Walker was going to do what he did last year and jump in because he was looking very. I know he's sharp all year round, but I was looking at his pictures, and he was posting a lot more often physique mm. shots and often. And I thought, okay, he looks like he's he looks like he's prepping here because he's looking mm. very very sharp. And I thought, okay, he's going to try and you know, because I think I think he was doing the art last year all along. Uh, I think he just he was holding out because I think he I think he was the one that got the price money increase by him playing hard to get. Yeah. And, but I think he started. Sec- I think he secretly was. Pre- I think he was secretly prepping anyway. Yeah. So um, that makes sense. So yeah, but um, okay. yeah, it's um, it's um, I, I think I think though I, I'd love to know when the Olympia knew when Arnold was going to increase the prize money because I kind of got a heads up a few hours before it, it, it happened. Oh. And I'm just wondering how, because that news must have been under like lock and key for so right. long. Do you know what I mean? They must have known a couple of months before, maybe. You know, because this Brian Powers, he's making big moves. I've also heard something else about the um, the Arnold expansion as well into over this side of the world. Let's just say. Oh well, I yes. mean, our UK that's already a thing. Um, no, not no. not that one, not that. I mean, it's a whole lot. We could have easy. You got France, you got Germany, China, you got all kinds of countries over there. No, think Dubai, Dubai, think wrong, think Kuwait. Wrong. What else do we have in what else do we have over this side of the world? Soccer, I don't know. <laughs> talking about, what are you talking about as far as uh countries? El Spania, Spain, okay. Oh, well, that's okay. No, the old Europe, the old Europe. Well, Europe. I mean, oh. to, tell me this I don't know for sure, I don't know because you would know. I, I know the Arnold used to have shows in for a couple of years, they were having the Arnold Ohio was IPB Pro League. And they were still running a couple Arnold Classics under the Elite League, were they not? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, they haven't. They don't do that anymore, do they? Well, they have been. Oh, they have been. Okay, I mean, like last mm-hmm. year they were doing it. Even that well, was... I heard that the well, I heard when I spoke to actually the South African promoter because they used to have Arnold South Africa, and then it, yeah. I heard that um, it was it was a bit of a washout. It was held in like this big tent, and it was just oh. not like an uh, what you would really consider to be an Arnold. Mm. So that one, that one went by the wayside. Obviously, the Arnold Australia, um, that one, uh, I'd, I'd love to see them bring that back because I remember the um, Tony Doherty lost a lot of money during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he lost like like almost like a life ending amount of money. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like 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 bankruptcy. Do you know what I mean? And mm. and I heard that he took took the hit on that one. Wow. So I feel like with what he's done and how he's positioned himself for twenty plus years in Australia, I would like to see him. But the thing is now the Arnolds now. And now not collaborating with other promoters, it seems, apart from the Arnold Brazil with Tamer. Yeah. So I would love to see a collab. If they're doing that with Tamer in the Arnold South in Brazil, then mm-hmm. I would like to see an Arnold Tony Doherty collaboration again as well. Because I think he deserved that. And he's, oh, yeah. he's still out there promoting the sport. And um, and he's and he's he's put a lot of work in over the years to 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 not to then have that potentially taken away from him. Do you know what I mean? So, okay. um, but anyway, but the Arnold Arnold Europe. Um, there you go. What, what? So obviously it's been elite for since 20, 2017. Yeah, twenty eighteen. Sorry, since the split in twenty seventeen. So there's potential that um, that might be be taken over by Amelia. Uh, Wouldn't it no, be Amelia? no, no. The Arnold, oh, no. the actual like the Arnold UK has been uh, run by the. It's might be run by Brian Powers and Arnold. They took it over okay. themselves because in the UK it was a complete. The promoter, the promoter that actually they had the last two years, he's, he's in jail now. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, he was a complete crook. I mean, I know some of the, like, there's so many people who paid like hundreds of dollars for meet and greets and photos with Arnold who never got their money back. No. So, of course, I think that was what sparked 
Brian and Arnold to say, right, we're not collaborating with anyone over there. We're going to just take it over ourselves. And that's what's happening in two weeks' time. Fair enough. All right, let's move on to the contest. Uh, yeah. This this was not a controversial victory for Heidi Chupan. You know, we got a lot of flack in the comments. I don't know if you have go back and look <laughs> yeah, on the comments. I've seen them all, yeah. Uh, I was trying to look up into how to say far, how to say calm down or relax in Farsi, and I couldn't quite figure it out. But uh, I'm sure it's not that hard to figure out. But a lot of them, a lot of the Heidi fans seem upset or insulted that we're even insinuating that Samson ever had a chance and even more so that he could possibly have a chance at the Arnold UK because they believe Hadi is just so much better. He's on this completely different level than Samson, anybody else right now, obviously not than Derek. Derek just beat him a few months mm -hmm, ago, mm -hmm. but you know, this is, this is what we do. We don't, we don't write people off because we've both seen events where contests where the, the favorite came in a little bit off and the, Somebody, uh, some uh, occasionally it's been someone we weren't even thinking about, just mm. rose, rose up from the, the back of the ranks, like the way Ronnie did back in '98, and just blew everybody away. So, I mean, but it was it was a decisive, a decisive win for Hadi. And you said that all as soon as they came up for the judging. You know, we had Samson. We were both talk. We were kind of favoring yeah, Samson. I, I was, I was watching the live stream on the desktop in my in my office there, and and Samson for me because I'm a sh I like shape. But the thing is, also I like I like condition, and I couldn't necessarily see the conditioning that or the lack of conditioning on Samson so much on that thing. And then when I was looking at the next morning, obviously I've spent hours on looking on you know bodybuilders like borders and Gilco and all that, and I was like, oh yeah, I think Hadi does does have this one quite comfortably. And it was about a 90% consensus that, um, that Hadi had it. And then at the night show, um, what I was really shocked by, I expected Samson to come back better for the second day. He didn't, not like he did last year. Last year, I was like, mm, on the first day, the second day, I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. And I said to you that Andrew Jack even said on an interview I did with him for Global, um, he said that uh, as soon as he saw Samson on the second day, get get he was getting ready backstage. He said he went up to him and Milos backstage and said, you've got this, man. He says, what, what have you done in the last 24 hours? Seriously, you've absolutely transformed. Yeah. Um, so, um, but um, Hadi, Hadi actually, for the first time, I think ever, I, he had a really crisp, he was crisp from the back. And he did yes. that from day one to day two. Because I, I, I sent that picture on the readable bicep. I zoomed right in. Okay. And that's the, because even when I saw him in San Marino, the famous San Marino show in 2017, yeah. his only re weak pose then and since is, was the readable bicep. Not because of muscle, but because of the lack of detail. But on the Saturday last finals, that's the first time I've seen him with real, real hard detail in the readable bicep. So for me, that made him kind of unbeatable on the day. In fact, now we're, we're thinking if he had looked like that, if he had had that much detail from the back at the Olympia, I don't know if Derek would have beat him. I really don't. Yeah, he would have won. He would have won. Uh, yeah, he well, I, won. I actually had Hadi. I thought Hadi was going to win the 2020 mm -hmm. to Olympia. Terrific. I was watching in here on the studio and uh, – I wasn't I wasn't shocked that Derek won because Derek had the better readable bicep and there was a couple of things you know his posing routine was better and I know people think yeah. it doesn't make them when it's close you know um, it was a for me it was it was a kind of a flip of a coin but I kind of did expect Hadi to win but I wasn't shocked that Derek won and I said that at the time and I still obviously still maintain that now but I think I think this version this Saturday version of um, Hadi would have um, would have taken the Olympia last year yeah and you know I mean. If Samson had made a dramatic improvement, I don't even know if it would have been enough, honestly, because Hadi was just no. so good. Um, and now, you know, we're going to be doing a preview eventually for the Arnold UK, and I'm going to be really studying to see if Samson's posting updates, or maybe he won't. Maybe he'll just go dark until the show. But I'm curious to see if he can really tighten up, because we've both seen guys do it. Like Rolly Winkler did it that, I, that year. Crazy I, difference between I've the Arnold got, UK. I've got a feeling he won't. Uh, mm. I've got a feeling he won't. Um, I've, I've heard that he, he was, was happy with his condition. He thinks, he thinks his condition for this Arnold was better than the Olympia last year, no. which um, I disagree with. No, I disagree. I respectfully disagree. Um, mm. I, I don't know. I'm still hearing things about the body weight of 302 pounds. So t I'm, t I'm kind of getting the feeling that him and Milos are kind of going after the body weight, you know, mm. rather than the condition. So if, and if you, if you've got the, the coach saying conditioning doesn't matter, it's hashtag bodybuilding, then seriously, what does that, that is that a really good omen for someone that's going to really like, if I, if I, if I had to say, if Samson had called me on Saturday, what do you think, Giles? I said, mate, you know, after being beat by Hadi, I would have said, mate, get on the plane, come home very, very fast. Don't post anything and just go dark and suffer for the next two weeks and drop drop yourself down to 290, 292 and really go for that condition. Because 
you know, with because he does have a. I'm sorry, but he has a better physique than Hadi. He has a more pleasing yeah, he physique. He does. He does. You know, and and thing is, there are other things that I'm seeing on on Samson's physique that I'm not particularly liking. I'm not liking the 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 the, the oil in the shoulders. That I mean, it's not oil. It's you know, it's where he's yeah, putting. Gear, let's yeah. let's come on. Let's call it. Let's let's be open here. Gear. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so he's putting his gear in his side delts. And and thing is, I mean, he's starting to get that shine like Hadi is. Um, Hadi's improved it, but like you know, I saw the video of Hadi when he was shaking all the hands with the when he'd won at the for the people in the audience, and you could see the shoulder still bulging. And I don't think he'd put in shots in there anymore. I think it's just scar tissue, yeah. and the muscle just looked artificially large. And I know that a lot of people won't notice that, a lot of fans won't notice that, but I freaking do, and it really annoys me. Mm, yeah. So Samson started to do it. And also Samson's uh, midsection was starting to go. And I'm sorry, you can't, like, I mean, if you if you can't allow someone to be critiqued so they can be better, then, you know, then keep your blinkers on, keep leave your head in the sand, and then go and get beat by Hattie again at the Olympia. Because really Samson shredded is, I think what, I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't want to, not want to see that as a Mr. Olympia, a six foot, three, 290, 300 pound, whatever, aesthetic, with that presentation, with that beautiful shape. I mean, he made improvements to his physique uh, again. Like that frontal bicep was even more. It was even mm. prettier. And that yeah. was always his knock. When he leans on the one leg, that was his knockout shot. And now, you know, his calves are a lot bigger as well. He's got those nice small knees of huge sweeping quads. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's a combination of Flex Wheeler, Lee Haney, Sean Ray, bloody uh, Ronnie yeah. Coleman, you know, but. I mean, imagine, right? I mean, you telling me if if Samson could get in ninety eight Olympia Ronnie condition, you telling me if that showed up at the Olympia at two ninety, looking in that condition, you telling me there's anyone that could come close to him? Nope, nope, no way. There's no way. So, so, no. but unfortunately, if you've got the coach and and um and there's there's this sort of uh, and he's thinking he's in his best condition ever when he really isn't, hmm. then is that is he going to go and do what he needs to do in the next two weeks? Um, I don't know. Yeah. So Rafael Brandeo, uh, definitely the most improved guy on that stage. Wow. Best I've ever seen him by a mile. I was old. We were, you know, you were, again, you saw him 2017 San Marino. And that was, you know, this is, this is such an improvement over that. That was 30 pounds of muscle ago and better conditioning. Everything is amazing. This guy's got a classic shape, aesthetics, and he's got almost enough size. I think he just needs a little bit more, but I, I've heard, a lot of people making arguments that they thought he could have been second place. How close do you think he was? Actually, I, Porsche, I'm going to see how close it was. I will say this. <clears throat> I know that the tradition with Steve Weinberger and all the other judges, and they'd like to bring out the, <clears throat> they like to bring out who they see as the top two at the end. Yeah. But I honestly, honestly feel in this instance, in this contest, Raphael should be brought out with the two of them because it, it, I know we all saw it as like a one and two, Three and four, five and six race. We we're having all different decisions about will John De La Rosa beat um, Raphael? You know, will uh, Hadi beat Samson? And then it was Antoine versus Akeem and and uh, who else in the top six? Oh, and uh, uh, I'm just looking here. He did have it was straight hmm. seconds, hmm. straight seconds for Samson, straight thirds for. No, but regardless, I know we saw straight first and straight seconds. Regardless. Yeah. I think Raphael deserves to be in that call out because I tell you what, when he's posted these pictures and I've seen lots of pictures of him next to Hadi and Samson, I mean, he's taken, I think he's took, I think he took the side shots. I think his, I mean, he didn't have, and also, you know, me, I love my, I love my stripy delts and, yeah. and I'm yeah. sorry, but um, Hadi and Samson, you know, they, there was stuff in their shoulders, which I don't like, and it ruins the striations. Um, Antoine, another one had nice stripy delts as well. Yeah. yeah. But Raphael, um, like his shoulders are so much bigger and they're all striated. The three heads in the riddle bicep, you can see it. I mean, it was a beautiful physique. He's gained, what, 10, 15 pounds of stage weight and his waist is still nice and tight. Mm. His condition was spot on. I was speaking to Neil Hill, his coach this morning, because mm. I said, um, I, I actually said that. I said, like, this is what I said this morning. I said, mate, I said, so I said, so I said yeah. Okay. Um, I said, um, you need to, um, I said, please tell me that Raphael is doing the Arnold UK. I said, because if, if Samson comes in like that condition um, or not even as good, maybe if he's mm. not focusing on condition, then there's a chance that Raphael could pip him. Sure. I mean, ima and imagine if Raphael then beat Samson at the Arnold UK and then look at the momentum that would take going into, going into the Olympia. I mean, that would make him like a top five guy, top six yeah. guy, potentially, you know, that's how people would perceive him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Raphael. What I think for me, he was the shock of the show. He was the 
I think he was probably overall. Yeah, he was one of the best up. I mean, I was so, so silly. He is one of the best up. Of course, he was third place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, he was, he was, he was, he was the biggest surprise. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely phenomenal. And I think I feel like he's he's really moved up now. I mean, because he's he, when he goes back to the Olympia, I think he's a legit um, a threat for top six now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's move on. Jonathan De La Rosa. I was really pleasantly, pleasantly surprised at how good he looked. I, I, I really looking at the pictures and videos now, I think this is the best he's ever looked. And this is a guy that's been competing as a pro for over 10 years already. Yeah. You don't, you don't typically see that guys by that point, they're starting to fade typically Uh, for him to be getting better. This is a first prep with Patrick tour, I believe. Is that right? Uh, no, no, they, they worked last year. They, they worked, worked together last year. Last year. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got a handle on him last year. He looked really good at those two shows, Tampa and Chicago, but this, this blew that away. He just biggest I've ever seen him with conditioning and he's got that great shape, no weak body parts. Yeah. Well, well-deserved fourth place in this levels him up. He has never placed this high at an Arnold level at an Arnold for sure. This puts him in the conversation as a top six Olympia potentially. Why not? And what is it with these guys getting bicep tears? Like Antoine who tore both his biceps. Nathan that tore both his biceps. I mean, the surgery must be getting so good now. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, like, I mean, you would never, you would, I, I, I think people have just probably just forgotten the fact that he tore his bicep and it was it put him out, you know, for like what a year or something. Yeah. Um, but then last year, I mean, obviously, because he said I've only had several. When I interviewed him for Global last year, he said I've only had so many months back in the gym, serious training, and because he was quite happy with those second places, he was happy the fact that he was back. He was happy the fact he's back up on stage, you know, yeah. and and being competitive with Hunter Labrada and Justin Shire guys, you know, guys of that caliber. Well, in a pro show, right. so for him, um, I, I, to him to have that extra time training now with no problems with the arm. Um, I'm extreme. I thought that I mean, I've always been a big Jen, John De La Rosa fan. I love his frontal bicep or his readable bicep. Yeah. Um, in fact, there's an argument for saying that he had the best readable bicep in the show. It was pretty damn great. I mean, the, the mm. back was very detailed, thick from top to bottom. Glutes were carved out and striated. Hamstrings, yeah. nice and deep separations between the hamstring heads. Yeah, I mean, that, that put him ahead of James. And James, moving on to Holling, said, this is the best James I've ever seen. Yep. James, is, James is getting better and better, too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he's like, I, I hate to always jump into people's structural flaws or whatever, but for him to make top five, to make these improvements and to do that well with, you know, he doesn't have super wide clavicles. He doesn't, his waist is a little bit on his proportions structurally are not a hundred percent ideal, but he's mm-hmm. put so much muscle on and he came in with really good condition. Did want to see a little more separation between the muscle groups that would probably help him, but still by far he's, he's getting better and better. I was speaking to a very good friend of mine who's also a very, very experienced judge. He watched the live stream and he watched it with somebody else who was also a judge. And um, the first thing they said that they noticed was the way he was posing. Mm. They said the way he holds himself relaxed makes him look narrow. Uh, and they went. And the guy went through several poses and he said, he said seriously, he said that guy really, if he could, he could display his physique so much better if he just sorted his posing out. Um, he really needs to level that up. Do you know what I mean? Because he said um, he's making like the obvious, like clear mistakes. The fight, even just the thing is, you've got to get the compulsories right. You've got to put the practice in. You know, like when um, like Samson was told to hit his frontal bicep front on, like front, yep. like you would in prejudging. And I was like, why? Because I love the way he tilts his hips and you know flicks the leg out and does the kind of the, the tilting the double bicep. Yeah. You know, you got to and you got, so you got to know. You know, you've got to get someone to say, okay, James, this is how you should hit your side chest. This is how you should do your side tricep. Because um, that was the best James Holland said I think we've ever seen. And I mean, top five Arnold, that's like, like I said, I, th- I think top five Arnold is like the equivalent of making top 10 Olympia in terms of rankings and how people perceive you. Well, you think, how many people were actually missing from this? We had, Derek was out. Derek wasn't in. Derek Lunch wasn't in. Andrew Jack wasn't in it. Yep. Um, Nick Walker wasn't in it. Those yep. are the only three consistent top 10 guys. Rami? Oh, Rami. Yeah, Rami. But so we're missing a few guys. So, yeah, if you put them back into the into the same lineup, then there's mm. top – you would be top 10. So it does make yeah. sense like that because there's typically only about five Hunter. top Olympians. Oh, Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Hunter. I forgot. I'm, I'm <laughs> we'll um, forget about Hunter. Uh, moving on. Another guy that's been a pro for a while, Akeem Williams, and he just mm-hmm. keeps coming back. Then he's coming back from a shoulder surgery. He'd had a horrible car accident in 2022, still competed. He beat Kamal that year at the Tampa show. Um, 
and then he waited until he was done with the shows and fulfilled his commitments, got the shoulder fixed, came back looking pretty damn good. Again, when I'm looking at the Gilco footage the, the past couple days, you really see that his condition was a lot better than I thought it was. It's really hard to tell from the when yeah. all when you're looking at a big wide shot on your computer screen, the guys are like this big on the screen. But then you know when you're looking at your phone, they fill up your whole phone pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so he he really pulled it out, and he did get that one last call out where we were sort of puzzled because he got called out with uh, with Hadi, uh, Samson, and Raphael, and we we're like, what did he just go? Yeah. Is he, is he getting a, is he going to place ahead of James and Jonathan? Which ultimately he didn't, but I think that was Weinberg giving a chance because he did look better. He sharpened up significantly from Friday to Saturday. Akeem was clear. We could tell from the placings, from the way that they were placing him with the judging, the way they were calling them out. Akeem the first day was clearly seventh place because fifth and sixth was a fight between Antoine and James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we, we kept going back and forth. Like, you know, we're like first and second, we couldn't, you know, it was Hadi and Samson. Then it was John and, um, oh, it's gone blank. Anyway, yeah, oh, yeah. So third and fourth. I just yeah. want to see who. Uh, yeah, and, and Raphael, and then fifth and sixth was clear. I thought it was clearly between. They were fighting between. I couldn't decide between Raphael and James. I was flipping back and forth, and then I kind of Akim and the judge. I see looked like the judges clearly had him on, in kind of you know like out of the top six, just like seventh place. Yeah. And on that last, on that second day, I mean, I to, I'll be perfectly honest, completely complete confession here. I didn't pay that much attention to Akim. I was too busy looking. I was too busy, and I've not really analyzed his pictures or his videos much yet. But a lot of people have been saying he really sharpened up on the day two. And um, but for me, he wasn't in contention for top six. So to get um, sixth place, you know, to move up, and, uh, and that's a great result for Akeem, you know, especially coming back after all those injuries. He was but, ahead of Antoine at the, in the judging. Oh, really? Yeah. Day well, one, what? Oh, not yes. hang on, day one or day two? Well, judging and finals. Right. Judging would be, I assume judging would be Friday night and finals would be Saturday night on the scorecard, right? Yeah. So uh, Friday night, it was, Akeem had 35 points and Antoine had 30. So he, yeah. was five, he had a five point lead on him. Then on Saturday night, it was total opposite. He was 20, he was 20 points and Akeem, I'm sorry, Antoine was 35. So he really blew past him significantly at the finals. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. it shows you how tight it was between fifth, sixth and seventh. Yeah, and the, the fact that that rejudging things things can and do change. People go up, people go down in that second yeah. second night. I like the fact that they 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 judge it fresh every day. They don't just go, okay, well I've got uh, Akeem in seventh, and then they're pretty much they've made the mind up, and they're just going through the motions on the second day. It shows you that they're they're judging with fresh eyes, you know. And I think that I think that makes the the shows more exciting when you when these you know that these guys have an opportunity. Do you remember when? Um, what was it at the 22 Arnold Classic? And it was Nick and Steve Kukla, wasn't it? In, oh, yeah, in, the, yeah. in the final call out, just the two of them. And then Kukla on the second day dropped to what, fourth or fifth? Yes, he did. He dropped down. Because Amanda Latona went nuts. Remember, she was doing the live stream. <laughs> See, like, it, but it shows you, doesn't it? Like, it shows you that, that you know, how, how things can change. That's why I kind of hope that Samson was going to really tighten up like he did last year from day one to day two. Because, I mean, on Saturday, for me, he looked – I mean, Dennis James even said it on the commentary. He said, no, he looks the same today. Yeah. You know, so I was kind of – you know, but I, like I said, it's um, even then, would it have been enough to beat Hadi? I don't know. No. Uh, I think Akeem's the only one who really changed significantly in the Open from Friday to Saturday. Yeah. I wonder what, what he did. Think? I wonder what he did. I wonder if he just – We'll find out now. Maybe I'll talk to him and find out. But, uh, yeah, find out because sometimes it can, like I, I remember messaging um, Milos about Beirut and I said, what the, in Romania when I was doing the live stream with Lauren, I said, what the hell did you do, Milos, between the judging and the night show? He looks incredible for the night show. Mm. And he just like, nothing. He just had some chicken and potato and, you know, and it's had a lie down and, you know, and it, it, it oh, just said somehow their physiques just come alive. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, it's that, that's kind of the thing I like about bodybuilding, you know, when, even when shows are on the same day, even just a few hours you can see the competitors come back, you know, completely different. And some move up soon, some get some get better, some get worse. But over two days, I think that's I think that's where you know the big changes can happen. Yeah, I want to give Antoine a shout out because a lot of people made it an argument that he could have got best pose. The physique looked great too, but yeah. he's he's got a very it's an exciting routine. Samson is more of a classical, graceful, elegant poser. Antoine's just more dramatic, like it's almost like watching you know anime or something. It's close. But, yeah, he's it, it was close. And I'm I'm sure they had to sort of come down to the wire on who to give it to. But Antoine, great showing for him. Could have been could have been sixth place. And I had Akeem not improved dress the way he did. 
Yeah. But, uh, props to him. Last guy I want to talk about in open uh, is Horse MD because mm-hmm. Horse Horse is the guy that we all, I think all of us, everyone, every predictions that I did, I did one with you, Jose, King Kamali. We all had him in the fourth or fifth spot. All of yeah, us. And even several other prediction shows from other outlets that I watched. Everybody yeah. had him in the top five because we were basing that on the way he looked at Romania Muscle Fest. Yeah. His pro debut, his open debut. And he looked phenomenal there. This was not that horse MD. He did not. It was a, it was a shadow of that, which, yeah. you know, he just needs, like I said, still has all the a potential is still there. Of course it is. I, needs a break, needs a reset and he'll be back. I saw um, on Milos's Instagram today, he said that um, the plan is because he was saying goodbye to horse. And he said, this is the last time I'll see him now for so-and-so saying goodbye or whatever he's getting on the plane. And he said, um, he said that the next time Horse steps on stage will be in 2025. Now, uh-huh. I, surely Horse is signed the contract for the RBK because Raphael Brandeo is not doing the RBK. He's doing the, sorry, before I was saying, actually, when I was talking about Raphael, he's going to go for the Arnold Brazil. Yeah. Because I said, I said, Neil, try and get Raphael in the RBK. I said, because imagine if he went and took Samson out. You know, because it's like that could happen. That could happen. Yeah. You know, when something, you know, when someone gets a look and someone brought this new physique. But going back to horse, um, I really hope he does. I mean, he could do a lot in two weeks. I mean, all he has to do is just tighten up and just. I mean, two weeks. I mean, you've you've competed. You know, I've competed. You know, I've, your physique can change massively in a week. Yeah. Yeah. So why doesn't why doesn't he? And I think it's surely if he's Brazilian, why isn't he doing the bloody armor Brazil as well? I I that's that really a. Uh... Come on, on. that's get like a no ass, brainer. Get your asses and compete. And surely, with Milos as a, as, as a, as a coach, he'd want them to do because you know, Milos he likes guys, his guys to compete, 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 right? Right, right. So, and why it, is he saying to Horse, take, take, you know, step on stage next year? He should be in the Arnold UK, which he's committed to, and he's on the poster, and he would have signed the contract, and he needs to get his ass in the Arnold Brazil, unless he's do, not doing it because he's scared of Raphael. Well, let's see, who is his sponsor? Because Maximum Tight, so he's sponsored by a Brazilian company called Max Titanium. I cannot yeah. imagine they would not almost demand he do the Arnold Brazil. Yeah, no, no, he should. He should. And the thing is, it's not like he's got loads of bits missing. He just needs to sharpen up. Yeah. yeah. Another two weeks, he could look completely different and probably leapfrog over guys that he might have just, well, he would have just competed at against in um, in uh, Columbus. Right. I mean, the, that Romania Muscle Fest look would have done much better than the look he brought to this Columbus. He would have been yeah. arguably fifth, sixth at, at the worst. I and I, th- I think if the RJK, it might end up just having like six, seven guys in the open. I mean, that's great. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I heard rumors that Hadi might not be doing the RJK. And I'm thinking uh-huh. you better bloody had because that's an one that's an easy payday. And if you've signed the contract, don't piss the promoters off and let them down because people buy tickets based upon those top names. Right. Yeah, well, we'll see. Well, let's move on because yesterday I did a whole wrap up and I didn't even mention classic because so many people in the chat kept mentioning <laughs> things related to the open. I got a little bit of heat. You can't please everybody all the time, but. Uh, this was a huge, huge upset. Uh, I had done a video the weekend before that. Who's going to win the Arnold? And the picture, the pictures I made for the graphic were Ramon and Urs because they've been they've been neck and neck these past couple of years. Yes, fair. Ne- neither one of them has been beaten by anyone other than Bumstead for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Although Ramon's been beating uh, Urs. Uh, I had Brian on there because you, you can't ever count Brian out. And at the at the very end, I said, "I'll put Wesley on there. What the heck? He might do okay." <laughs> and um, Wesley took. I think there was that guy mad because I said he took eighth at the Olympian. It was seventh. It was seventh. Yeah, you robbed him of place. Seventh. Sorry, dude. He took seventh. Anyway, go cry about it. But uh, for him to do the improve, to make the improvements that he's made, nobody saw that version of Wesley coming. I've seen him look mm-hmm. very, very good. He looked good at the shows last year. The one he, I think it was Spain, where he qualified. For the Olympia, he looked really good at that show. He looked really yeah. good at the Olympia. This was a whole other level. Just like we've seen Raphael showed up like, wow, we've never seen that Raphael. I've never seen that Wesley. And I think it was still close. Ramon is, you know, genetic freak. Uh, beautiful physique. He's amazing. If Bumstead hadn't been competing the past couple of years, he would have been the Olympia champion for the past two years. That being said, he was a defending champion. But this Wesley was just too much for Ramon to handle. I spoke to Wesley today, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool guy. Um, yeah, I, like, I, funny thing is, I mean, he came out and he looked, I mean, obviously his condition, his separation was on another level to what he's ever been before, but he, he only had something like two pounds extra from the weight increase. That was like eight or 900, I'm sure he said it was 900 grams. And I remember interviewing him and laughing. 
And he said, no, Giles. He says, he says, he says, even on a tall guy like me, he says, you put it in the right places. Hmm. He said, that's actually, it's actually quite a lot. And I was just like, well, it's not. But but he, <laughs> he, he proved me wrong. He proved me wrong. He showed up at the, like on the live watch party, which he, as you know, is done live. So it's not, we, we don't do it in, in retrospect. Yeah. Um, I was just like, my eyes are drawn to Wesley. My eyes are drawn to Wesley, not Ramon, you know. And, and Ramon was bloody close to Bumstead at the Olympia, mate. I mean, let's face mm. it. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was. So for Wesley to look that dominant, I mean, I think he, that's the only one I can like. He was dominant. For me, it was lights. It was a lights out victory. So yeah. um, I was really, and I said to him, I said, oh, please, I hope he wins. I hope he wins because he really, really deserves it. Yeah, we actually, because we were getting, the Ramon fans very upset. There's a couple of Brazilian guys in my gym today who were very, very upset. Let me tell you. They came up to me and we had little chats. But, <laughs> I, you know, they were saying Wesley has no legs. And we pulled up on the he our does. analysis. We looked at the at the shots and Wesley's legs were just as, as big as Ramon's. They don't, they don't have, I think Ramon has a little bit better sweep and he definitely has better hamstrings, but they were oh. very, very comparable. Well, Wesley's like what six three? Six three, correct. I because I mean, like I said, I'm six foot, and I remember bumping into him backstage at the show when he turned pro, and I was like, "Holy shit, he's a giant!" Yeah, he's a you big know, guy. and like people six one don't tower over me, even six two, but like six three, I, I think he is. Him. I think he is actually legit six three. So he is. is. I stood next to him, and you know, I'm like, and that's. I mean, like you know, like, like when Jamie the Giant came into my house, he's six five, and he had to duck. He had to duck under the oh, the man. beams in my kitchen. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the the chair over the opposite me here was absolutely creaking. You know, but Wesley is a big guy, and he's also very wide. You yeah. know, so he's got a big old frame. You know, so um, that was by far the best version of Wesley. I mean, I, I, you know me, I like detail, like striations. I mean, his his whole body was just completely covered in detail and conditioning. And also, when he was hitting his, like when he was turning to the side, he was so nicely peaked and full. Yeah. Like he looked full, everything looked fresh and yeah. bursting, and everything was striated. And like he didn't even have to really flex to see all the fibers flickering and stuff like that. I was just like, this is a guy that's nailed it absolutely bang on. Yeah, it's funny because I heard people argue both ways. People said, well, Wesley's not really a classic guy, he's more of an open bodybuilder. And I heard the people say that about Ramon too. So they were going back. I've heard it on both sides that neither really? one of them is really a, a classic physique, they're both just like slightly smaller open bodybuilders but no classic is classic physique is kind of in the eye of the beholder it can be yeah. whatever you want it to be there's there's so there's such a gamut of different type of physiques that are doing well bumstead looks different than uh than urs than than ramon they all than ruffin brian they all have very different shapes structures so there's room for all kinds of great physiques to do well in classic yeah. so to, to just to, to make that argument like Wesley's uh he's not as pretty or he's not as aesthetic or whatever you know it, you could argue it, this is such a subjective sport classic because it's a new division mm. nobody's going to be happy and you know obviously all the Brazilian Ron, fans are crestful Ron Ron what do you think about when Arnold said you remind me of an old like basically saying Luke Ferrigno and the guy and his nickname is the Dutch Oak <laughs> I was like yeah. I was just like I mean that was that was that was a bit of a gaff from Arnold. Because I mean, um, surely he looks at him and he sees the he must see the similarities between him, you know, the old version of him and and and, and Wesley now. I mean, come on, even the way he, he I mean, even like the, the arms out tricep pose, which you call his tricep pose, you know, like yeah. he even does the same poses, right, you know. Right, it's right. like are uh, you telling me uh, you know, because apparently at the um the seminar on well yesterday, yeah. the Sunday seminar, there was Ronnie, Lee Haney, uh who's who else was there? Jay Cutler, Arnold. Uh, Wesley was on the end and you had and had he and apparently um, Wesley said that uh, Arnold went up to him and he says he says you're the you're, you're what classic should be and, and you know so obviously Wesley now is he's he's on cloud nine at the moment so sure. you imagine that from his from his you know his dad <laughs> yeah I mean I don't know why he said he looked like Buffarino he looks more like Arnold let's be real but yeah that's what, basically that's what I'm saying yeah it's like yeah. come on Arnold come I, I on, think mate. do you think he did that just like he doesn't want people being compared to him that he was like a not a one-off and he doesn't want doesn't want anyone saying this well, guy's the next Arnold, the new Arnold. Well, it's funny because I heard a rumor what somebody actually quite high up in the industry told me he said the reason that the um they drug tested the 1990 Arnold Classic was because something no the 19 the Olympia or something is because he didn't want Haney breaking his record or something. Ah, well, that was yeah, both they, what, they, they, they were both drug tested that year. 
Yeah, he said. I said that's why he really pushed for Joe Weider to do the drug testing because he wanted Haley to lose, so he wouldn't break his. <laughs> so he wouldn't break his. I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, you oh, hear boy. kind of like these kind of crazy rumors, you know, and yeah, I don't buy that. You one. know, like um, Dorian's feet went from size nine and a half to eleven from using GH, and he used to put his he used to put his blood in the fridge at night and put GH in it, and then put it back in. I mean, it's just this bullshit that you hear. Should, you know? yeah, we should. That sounds good. I'm gonna try that. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I I thought it was uh, it was close, and Ramon looked. He's he did improve. From Friday to Saturday, it just wasn't enough. Wesley was that damn good, and you know whether you love whether you prefer Ramon or not, you got to give this guy Wesley credit for how great he looked. He looked great. Yeah. I think um, Ramon looked a lot better at the Olympia because Olympia mm-hmm. was very because I, I was never a big Ramon fan a couple of years ago. I didn't see what the fuss was, and then at the last year's Olympia, he came out and I was on the live stream. And, Holy shit! I said he's really like he's really nipping at Chris Bumstead's heels there because Chris was kind of. Two percent bet, not as good as he was the year before. Still fantastic and still good enough to win, clearly. Yeah. But Ramon, um, until last year's Olympia, I was I was like, okay, I get it now. I can see that the guy has got a beautiful physique. But what was going on with his stage presence, Ron? He I looked, watched the Gilka, and he's just mm, mm. he looks like he's like he's got somebody like got a, it's looking like a gun put by the side of the stage, pointing a gun yeah. at him, and he's mm-hmm. like, and he doesn't want to be there. It's like I don't care whether your freaking pet hamsters just died. Do you know what I mean? If you're on stage for like several minutes, suck it up and fake it. Put on a yeah. persona. You know, you're only at the f- you got all these fans, all these people going crazy for you, and you're just like, it's Lazy, like you know, I, I don't want to use I, the word lazy comes to mind, but it just looked unenthusiastic, uninspired. Where Wesley was like electric, he looked like he, yeah, ah, exactly. yeah. Ah. Come on, you got to command the stage. You know, can you imagine Bumstead coming out and going, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like, not holding his poses. It's like, come on. I, I, yeah. Sometimes when I'm at shows and I see that, I just want to rub on stage and just slap him around the face and say, come on. You know, yeah. like, 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 like oh, I'm going to get shit for this. Well, remember when, was, yeah, go hang ahead. On, hang on. Like, like Samson was at Romania. Like as soon as um, he was, he was coming on stage, like he's, because you know, Samson, he commands the stage. Yeah. And then he came out, he came out and then they put Beru's in the center and then Samson's conference just went. Doosh. And he rushed his pose routine. He didn't want to, it's like he completely just threw in the towel. You know, but that's how it that's how it comes across, yeah. even though he won. You know, and the thing is, like like I was criticized for um, you know, had he had no posing routine, had his right. back was soft. And they're like, but it's like, look, when you get to this level, these things do matter because it's a visual sport, it's a sport of comparison. If Wesley comes out and is owning the stage and looks as good, and you're coming out and you're like all you know, like all meek and mild and looking pissed off, it's like, what do you think that's what do you think message that sends to the judges and the fans? It means I don't really want to win. Eh, you're a professional, Ron. You're a professional. Suck it up. Yeah, I mean the best example of someone who really came out there hungry. They own the stage. Was there Phil Heath? He used to come out yeah. there with yeah. his eyes, all, eyes almost bugging out of his skull. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and it's like, but when you're at the Olympia and they start doing stuff like that, it just sends us the crowd. You're like, what? How many people is in the Orleans Arena? Like five, six thousand people. Yeah, closer to the 10, place just the place just went bananas. It's like I mean, Nate, I mean that's why I love Nathan the Ashes stage presence because he's so fierce on stage. Yeah, you know he really like you know when you know like people get excited when they know that someone like a Nathan the Asher with that level of stage presence is going to be competing because you know it's gonna it's gonna make it exciting. Right. I mean, it's my stage, my show. That's mm-hmm. how you know if you want to win, you have to project. I'm the winner. I'm here to win. Not. These guys are not beating me, you know, and I yeah. didn't see that. I didn't see that hunger and that ferocity in Ramon at all. And we heard he prepped for six weeks. Yes, we heard that. Yeah. So I hope that's that, not true. That's not, also, that's not I, enough time. I, apologies. I've not put the lights on. I didn't realize it was getting dark <laughs> now. <'cause> I, <laughs> sorry. I've got literally one lamp on here and I'm using the light from the laptop. That's, uh, that's it's okay. Good. I realize it's, it's you're five hours I'll ahead get, of me. It's I'll six. get it right. I'll get it right. I should have put the light on in the because I'm in the studio in the, in the Globe Muscle Studio. I should have got it. Um, I should have put the overhead light on. I do, I do apologize. I like my green. It reminds me of summer times coming soon. But uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, so, like, have you noticed the? It's getting lighter in the mornings. It's getting sunnier. I felt like mm-hmm. today I was, I was. I nearly opened some windows. I mean, the other day I had the, <laughs> yesterday I had the fire on and the stove heater on. I went for a big bag of wood. You know, it's. Uh, I think I feel like when the the spring is on its way. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, uh, we'll recognize, you know, this Damien Patrick guy looked really good. DeBull looked really good. Mm-hmm. But I just want to focus on the Breon versus Urs situation. Uh, we're hearing a lot of people thought Breon Ansley looked good enough to place ahead of Urs. Urs, best poser, of course, well-deserved. Still love Urs' physique. But this was not 
This was nowhere near the best Urs. This was not the Urs that we saw at the Olympia last year. This was not the Urs we saw at the Arnold last year. He looked flat, deflated. I don't know how he could possibly look smaller because he's put on so much more body weight over the past year in the offseason. It counts for nothing when it comes to show day. You can put on 50 pounds, but when it comes to show day, you might have to get that 50 pounds off. Do you remember Lou Ferrigno once? He said he bulked up to so-and-so like an extra, he just ate everything that wasn't nailed down. And he put on so many 30, 40, 50 pounds or whatever. When it came to dieting down, he ended up being one pound heavier than his last stage appearance. Yeah. So it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Um, but for us, didn't I, did I say, didn't I say to you in the morning of the show, before we even, even walked on stage, I still saw the progress picture. I put it on the group chat. And I said, um, I think Urs is, over, he was showing his legs. I said, does it look like he's over dieted? He looks like he's over dieted and he's lost a little bit of the sweep on his legs. I mean, I respect the fact that he went for conditioning, but um, this was, it looked like he just, he basically pushed it too hard. So I hope he can just backpedal a little bit, take the foot off the gas a little bit and try and fill it a bit for the Arnold UK because, um, yeah, I'd like to see him. Because I, I, I personally had, um, and I'm not a massive fan of Brion, but I had him third in this one. I had him beating Urs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I like both guys. I have no uh, no bias towards either one. I would have given it to Brian. I would have given him mm. third place. Yeah. I messaged Chris Cormier that today. I said I had Brian third night. Chris had Brian winning the whole show. Oh come on! I, I <laughs> come on, Chris. And who trades? Uh, who trades Brian? Chris does. Chris Cormier. <laughs> Oh, oh come on! I think when you do wrap up, so you got to kind of, you know, it's like you know, like Milos, Milos is probably like when he jumped in our wrap up, and it's like you know, and you know, it's like when they, obviously he would have had Samson winning the Olympia, and it's like come on, it's, it's not, it's not really, you know, you, yeah, it's just, that's why sometimes we, you know, like like people are saying, oh, he obviously Giles is, you know, he's he's, he's a UK guy, so he's going to be biased towards Samson, and then I'm like, well, actually, yeah, had he deserved that, you know what I mean? So you, you know, that's why I think we're needed in this industry, Ron, because uh, you you were not biased towards Samson at all. We in hate fact, everyone equally. We hate everyone equally. No, you, <laughs> call, you call it like you see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. judging with your eyes, not your heart. And that's if I true. critique these guys, even if they're like a fellow countryman, it's not because I'm I'm a hater. It's because I'm critiquing them so they can be better. Yeah. Because there's no such thing, I mean, apart from 98 uh, Flex Wheel at the Arnold Classic, I don't think there's any physique that you could look at and say that is perfect. They, their condition, their symmetry, their shape, there's nothing they could do, could have done to look any better. So, you know, bear that in mind, because when, when we say this, we're, we're not saying it because we're having a dig or because we've got something against them. That's just bullshit. You know, I, I couldn't care less. You know, I couldn't care less whether they bloody killed my pet rabbit. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, I just, I just, uh, I just say what I say. Yeah. And, you know, the, I think we can both remember there's been times for both of us over the years where we've been critical of somebody. And at the time they were very upset, but yeah. maybe a year or two later, they improved what we had critiqued them on mm-hmm. and they placed better or they started winning. And mm-hmm. I've had people come back and say, you know what? You were, I hated you. I thought you were a dick at the time, yeah, 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 yeah. but you were hundred percent right. And, you know, now here I am. I just won the, this or that show or placed fifth at the Olympia. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I th- yeah, I think the ones the, the the further to the top you get, the less you get that of that. Mm. The ones that are really, really the elite, the top, top, top guys, like the top ten, you know, the top one percent of bodybuilders, they usually they usually thank you for your critique. Usually, I get DMs. I get more DMs than why did you say that? You know, or you know, because it's um, you know, they 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 kind of respect. Unfortunately, you know, when you've been doing this as long as we have, you know, you kind of I'm not saying you have to respect our opinion, but you have to respect our intent. Right. Yeah. We're not, we're not out to get anybody. We're not fanboys and we're not haters. We're, we're, <laughs> we're neither. We're neither. I'm out to get everyone. <laughs> we're journalists or something like journalists. Like, I'm, I'm looking like something of a horror film, like a Blair Witch movie. I'm going to get some snot coming up my nose and go, go right in. I'm so scared right now. I'm, so, I'm, so I'm going to get a bobble hat. <laughs> That's good. That was good stuff. Do you know what? This is so much better with the mic and the headphones. I can totally, I feel, 10 times more engaged you sound so you sound 10 times better it is uh, <laughs> why didn't i think of this before i'm such an idiot <laughs> Good, I mean, I could, I not could, tigerific like I not tigerific i could tell i could do a whole hour next time about all the stupid mistakes i've done with these over the years so i'm not going to <laughs> yeah but, uh, i want to wrap it up now i'm very hungry i got a flat tire i gotta get my car fixed so uh appreciate you giles appreciate uh getting this back together well we didn't have power hour that long before md went away uh, Jen came up with the title. Thank you, Jen. And it's a great opportunity, especially after shows, to really break it down when yeah. we've had a couple of days to process and digest. And we're not in the heat of the moment where we just 
We just saw the results 10 seconds ago. You know, when you said, um, should we call it power, about three hours before I had exactly the same thought. Uh, I was sat here, I was sat here. I think I forget what I was doing. And I just thought, <laughs> why, don't we just, why are we doing these shows? I'm happy to, you know, happy to do them as many times. Or why don't we just call it power and keep, keep yeah. it going? Like, you've, you know, you've, you've got Dr. T back on board now. It's like, you can, yeah. people surely can see what, you're building with your channel. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's, it's just obvious. Let me, I'm going to, in the comments, guys, should I call my interviews? The, should I start coming back with interviews and call them Ron Line Report? Because I know that was something I built with MD and did hundreds of, I did like 600 of those for MD, but it's not like there's another Ron that's going to come along and do a Ron Line. Yeah. I'm, I'm Ron. Maybe, maybe Ronnie Coleman might, might steal it. Because uh, you know who gave me Ron, uh, Peter McGuff, the late, great Peter yeah, McGuff? Yeah. He gave me that title. <laughs> Out of respect to, out, sorry to, sorry to, out of respect to Peter, I think maybe you should keep it then. I mean, it's it was a great title at the time. He, I thought it was corny, I'm like Ron Line, and then I did a few of them. Like, you know what? I actually like this Ron Line. Ron yeah, line, yeah, line. yeah, yeah. The Ron Line Report. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. It's, so, it's like when I kind of make my return, you know, um, to obviously because I've I've not I've still got the studio here. Yeah. Um, I just keep thinking, do I call it Global Muscle? Do I call it something else? Or do I, you know, Global Muscle? Like, yeah, I mean, should I just, is it something that's established that people will draw more people in to watch or will it, or will it kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm still undecided at the moment. So, we and like I said, I'm, 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 I'm working on other things at the moment, you know, like the tours, multiple tours at the moment. So I'm really busy with that. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, I'm kind of, um, but I don't want to be out of this whole thing for too long. Do you know what I mean? That's why I like doing these things with you, Ron, because it's, um, I think it's important to uh, to keep things going, you know? So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see. You can't do Tiger Fitness. That's Mark Lobliner. So, <laughs> Tiger uh, Fitness, yeah. yeah. But you were Tiger before. I think you were being called Tiger long before he had that company. Yeah, yep. whatever, whatever it means. So, anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Appreciate this man, Giles Tiger Thomas, my brother from some other mother, apparently. <laughs> well, actually, you know, we're, we're both uh, – you're a full Welsh, right? Are you 100% Welsh? Uh, mother and father both born in Wales, yes. Okay, so I'm only half. I'm only half breed. The other half uh, just uh, depends on who I'm talking to. But <laughs> Ukraine, Ukraine, and Poland would be the other the other grandparents. So yeah, quarter quarter Ukraine. I used to say Russian. Don't say Russian anymore. You got to be if you're Ukrainian, you don't say you're Russian anymore. Like they like in the okay. old days because they don't get along anymore. Those two play, those two countries. So yeah. anyway, guys, please subscribe, like, and share. Leave leave some comments. I'm going to get back to all of them. This channel's not so big yet that I will not. Uh, address all the compliments and insults and whatever you want to put down there. It's, it's Ron, all Ron yeah. you did really well on the views on the watch party, mate. Yeah, I think yeah, you're making yeah. some moves there, mate, making some waves. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. And, you know, in large part to yourself and Jen and Mike, you guys worked tirelessly. You stayed up till three in the morning, Saturday night. Yeah. 3 a.m. Your time. It was, it was hard getting hold of that meth, mate. I got, I'm not going to be honest. Uh, you know, around, around my area, it was a bloody hard, hard find that. Dude, at 3 a.m. I would be, you would have, you would have had to do all the talking. I would have just been like, eh, eh, eh. I'm, I'm a big baby with trying to stay up late. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Appreciate you watching. We're going to keep it on, keep it going on this channel and bring you more and more content. So please subscribe and support the channel so we can make it bigger, better, bolder, stronger, faster, and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching another episode of the first episode on the new channel, I should say, of Power Hour with me and Giles Tiger Thomas. We'll see you next time.